Hey guys, it's Liz. Welcome back to my homeschool YouTube channel. And today I wanna to show you um, some similarities and differences between Singapore Primary 2022 and Math Mammoth. And so um, if you're new to this channel, we have been using Singapore Math Primary 2022 version. It looks like this. Um, this would be half a year's worth of books. Uh, so double that for a full year. Um, we've been using that with my oldest son, who's now in fifth grade. I mean, it's the newest of several versions that they have put out. and. Um, then we are switching this year for his fifth grade year um, to Math Mammoth, the light blue version. This is what we'll need for the entire school year. If you're new to this channel, uh, we've used Singapore with my son pretty much for the whole time. Uh, my younger kids actually are using Math with Confidence. I prefer that a ton as far as it being teacher friendly and a lot of hands-on, just conceptual math work. I feel like it's a really solid program. So I decided not to use Singapore Math with my younger kids, even though that was an option. Um, and I just figured we would finish out Singapore with my oldest son. Now the problem and the reason why we're switching was that last year, his fourth grade year was a really, really difficult year. Um, it was difficult only in the subject of math. <laughs> and so um, he just pushed back so hard um, every single day. It was just like a fight every day. He is a very independent type kid. He wanted to go learn it himself and that was working for quite a long time, you know, um, for him to mostly just read through the material. If there was a new hands-on concept that we needed to do, I would use the teacher's guide. But for the most part, um, the teacher's guide is really, really tricky to use. Um, I just found it horrible to be honest. And so um, I'll give you a few examples later of just like how a lesson would be if I was to use the teacher's guide. But for the most part, it it wasn't his style. He didn't want me to ask him all of these questions and slow him down. And I think that that probably did really affect maybe just some of the ways that he was able to move forward or not move forward with the material. And I just didn't feel well equipped to teach him. And I had purchased some video subscription from one of the creators of Primary 2022, Jessica Kaminsky. And she has an amazing video library. And so I purchased the fourth grade year videos and um, and I feel like it was just an awesome video collection. She's continually making new videos to add to it. Um, they're not like lesson for lesson videos, so I couldn't say, okay, today's lesson, let's go watch the video for that. It wasn't as smooth as that. It was more like, oh, let's go learn this concept over in the video library, and then you can you know, work on these lessons. Um, but then we would just have these problems where we'd be totally stumped, especially their word problems that were harder. And I wouldn't be able to help him. It just, my, my brain was like, I don't know how to solve this problem, honestly, or I don't know how to teach you how to get there. Um, Singapore math is a crazy different way to learn math than I grew up learning math. And and we just decided for the sake of relationship to try a new math program. I told my husband, we've got to make something different because this is not working. And it's really felt like math was stealing the joy of our homeschool day and it was just hard for him to recover. And maybe we could have gone and held on to it if I would have gotten a tutor or something, but I just decided to try Math Mammoth. So now you know why it wasn't working for us. Um, and now I want to go ahead and share um, what our experience has been with Math Mammoth so far, and then take a look at just some specific differences that I've noticed, as well as some specific similarities. Um, so we started, you'll notice, um, I did not get fifth grade for him um, for Math Mammoth. I ended up getting fourth grade, which is level four. And um, they do have placement tests on their website that you can take, but I felt like with how rough our last year Singapore went, we only made it up through 4A last year instead of 4B. Um, I felt like we should just do fourth grade math over again and fly through the easy stuff and really get a taste for how Math Mammoth um, organizes their curriculum and the scope and sequence is slightly different. So over the summer, I had my son start level 4A and that just went really well for him. Honestly, he's over halfway through this first book now. And I think a lot of that is that we started in the summer doing a little bit every day and it was all review stuff he'd already done in Singapore math. And so, um, you know, I just think it was a great way for him to kind of get the style and the structure and, um, you know, begin to start reading the explanations and the way that they have it written in here. So um, that was really helpful. We may end up finishing book A and book B a little bit sooner this year just because 
Like I said, this is fourth grade math that he has covered already. And then some of it he will have not covered, especially by the time we get to book B. And so I'm kind of curious how this is gonna go when he gets to new material, if he will be able to primarily self-teach. Um, we may end up using some of the videos that the creator Maria has for each lesson if he needs to. But the thing that I have found really, really helpful is that whenever he does have a question, which is, you know, still, still happens, even though the directions are in here, um, I'm able to go back through, how did they teach him to do this? And then I can look in his workbook at the examples that he is, um, he's had before him and see how they taught him to do that. Then I can try explaining it in a new way. That did not exist, I felt like, in Singapore Primary 2022. It was just so much harder for me to figure out the way to teach him and then to take some random problem he was struggling with and know how to help him solve that. It was just really tricky for me. Anyways, I'm very hopeful that this year is going to be better math year for us. So far it has been. Once we reach the new material, I think that's where the rubber is gonna really hit the road. But I do feel like I will be able to help him a lot easier um, just with the way that the instructions are laid out in the student workbook. All right, so now that you know more of why we switched, let me point out some similarities and differences between these two programs. So first thing um, I mentioned already is that both of these programs are advanced programs. Um, they are going to be teaching concepts that maybe just a middle of the road math might not go in as much depth or might not um, ask as tricky questions. And they're just working on harder concepts than you might find um, grade level somewhere else. And so, um, it's not uncommon for somebody to come in from, say, a school program and then pick either one of these two programs and have to go down a half a year. That's a very common, normal thing. The next thing that they both have in common is that they are both mastery programs. And so if you're not familiar with that term, there's mastery and there's spiral. And so mastery is going to be more of a, you know, you cover a topic a lot in depth, just that topic and then you learn it really well and then you move on. And then you have spiral, which is going to be where you're learning a new topic and then they toss in some older material. But with these particular programs, they are very mastery based. So you're gonna learn something really well, you're gonna move on, learn something really well, move it on. Okay, so while these curriculums are both mastery based, they have um, ways that you can kind of add in that spiral review if your student just needs a little more practice in an area. Um, so Primary 2022 has this book called Mastery and Beyond. This is kind of their version of um, if you need to do more work in an area or if you need to review something from a you know unit that you've covered, then you can come over here and do the Mastery, Mastery and Beyond books. I've always found them very helpful. We haven't always used all the pages, but it's just a great way to kind of get those um, recaps of those concepts that they've learned. And then the way that Math Mammoth has kind of organize that spiral review if you need more practice. Um, they've given you about twice as many problems in a math lesson. So the pages are a little bit more cluttered, um, or more overwhelming to look at, honestly, because there's just more math problems. And that's a huge you know, stumbling block for some kids that don't want to see all those math problems that they don't have to, to do. And so the way that um, we have used them and the creator Maria has recommended using those extra problems is to aim for about doing half as the normal lesson. And then if your child needs more practice, use those extra problems. Or if you wanna go back to older lessons to get you know some spiral review built in, then you can go back and um, try to fill in some of those empty problems. But one thing I've done with my son, just to kind of help him to know exactly which problems to do, rather than telling them, oh, do about half, um, is I just take a highlighter and I go through and I kind of circle the problems that I want them to do. And so if there's, you know, four problems working on the same concept, then I'll circle two. Move on to the next number. If there's, you know, eight problems working on the same concept, I'll circle four. So um, if he's struggling with that, then we'll stay on that more and do the next four. But if he's not and he's getting them all right, then we'll just move on. Another thing that these both have is they both have um, videos that you can watch if you need help teaching or if your child needs to just watch the video before the lesson um, they can do that and so they're free with math mammoth the creator maria has math videos we haven't personally used those yet and like i said we haven't gotten to the new material so we might need to do that later but um with primary 2022 um, Jessica Kaminsky has a huge video library and it's amazing. She's continually adding to it 
and I think she's aiming to add videos where they're going to eventually be like lesson by lesson. Um, right now it's more like concepts and some of the harder story problems. Um, she's got those in her video bank and then you only purchase the year that you need with her, whereas a math mammoth, they're free videos um, that the creator has up for you to watch. And so just know that that's there. If there are a few other similarities that I've noticed just in the way that they teach. I will say Singapore math does a lot of bar modeling and that's something you don't find in many other math curriculums. It's very advanced thinking and it is a pain in the you know what to learn how to do. But I can see as the problems were getting harder that the bar models were really helping with um, my son to visualize how to solve a problem or even to visualize what he was looking for. Um, and so Singapore math has you draw a lot of those and learn how to draw different types of bar models. And I'm not exactly sure how in depth Math Mammoth is gonna get with bar models, but I have noticed already they do um, bar modeling. And then down the road, I saw they are gonna have him draw some area models. Um, and so, yeah, that's something that I don't know if a lot of other math curriculums have, but these two both definitely have in common. So um, I was happy to see that, you know, that wouldn't be totally foreign to him coming from Singapore. And then the other thing that is a major difference is the, just the teaching style. And it is so, so different. Um, math Mammoth is made to be as independent as possible. And this probably depends on your kid. And in some ways, I don't know that math is really a fully independent subject. Like sometimes you just need to be taught something or, you know, shown examples on the board or watch the video where they show the examples on the board. Um, so I don't know that it can be fully independent, but the way that they've laid it out makes it as independent as a math program possibly can be. Um, whereas Singapore Primary 2022 is not made to be independent. It is made to have the teacher ask um, a lot of questions to the student. Um, it's made to have the teacher get the student to have these deeper thinking um, ideas of what are we looking for? What are you trying to solve? How would you do this next? What's the point of this? You're trying to like facilitate these deeper thinking, um, you know, conversations with your kid. The tricky part is um, sometimes your child just wants to do the math. <laughs> so one other thing I noticed with Singapore Primary 2022 is that it is more colorful. It's more appealing. There's more white space on each page. And um, just to kind of give you an example of what that looks like, you've got a non-overwhelming amount of problems. It's colorful. Um, and yeah, it just, it, it's visually really appealing, I think. And with Math Mammoth, what you're gonna find is that it is plain Jane and um, there are an overwhelming amount of problems on each page. There is some color and so I'm grateful for that, but overall it is just a lot of problems and um, just kind of stuffed with kind of the basics of what you need. Like here's some graph paper so you can keep your numbers straight. Here's all the problems that you're gonna need. Here's the explanations, here's the examples. Like it is all here. And so it is more stuffed looking and it could be overwhelming to your child, just FYI. But um, with that being said, I think the part that is really different between these two curriculums that I am liking is that the instructions and examples are all in the student workbook. And I just appreciate that so much because if my child can't figure it out, then I can go through the examples and I can go through the explanations, figure out how they taught him, and then go ahead and try to explain it my own way. And so far, he's been able to follow pretty closely what they're saying. Um, his mistakes have been more mathematical errors rather than not being able to follow like how they do something. And then Singapore, is it gonna have any of that teaching on the page? It's just gonna have the problems. Um, they do have a concept called learn together um, and they have a learn and a learn together chunk. And so that follows the teacher's guide, but I just find the teacher's guide extremely confusing and really frustrating. And I know I'm, I know I'm not alone in that because that is a huge complaint I've seen in the online Facebook groups with people is just how confusing the instructor's guide is. And I have the home instructor's guide made for homeschoolers. Let me just show you a couple of examples. I have opened up my book to um, the teacher's guide here. This is from 4A, um, word problems. So here would be from the learn section um, and looks like 
I would be asking my student anything in bold here is how they have it laid out. And then possible answers your student should answer would be just in regular italics there. Um, what do you know about the problem? They answer. What are you trying to find? They'd answer. How many steps will you need to solve the problem? How do you know this will require two steps? Um, how could you solve the problem? So you can see just in that first section, there's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of questions and I have not done any teaching at all so far in that section. Um, so probably we've read the actual story problem that they give you on the student workbook page. I've asked those questions to him, but I haven't really done any teaching and I haven't done any examples. Um, and so then you'd move to the next section and an example would be, um, what do you know about the problem? What should you do first? What should you do next? How does the model show you what operation to do first? Um, how do the models compare to your models? How are they the same? Which models show multiplication? Which show division? All right, so that would just be an example of what the flow of a math lesson would look like if we were doing word problems. Um, the tricky part for me is if I didn't know how to solve the problem by asking him these questions and um, looking over the answers that he was supposed to tell me, if I still needed more help, there just wasn't direction. There wasn't like, do this first, do this second. You know, like there just wasn't the the help there that I needed to teach him and it became quite frustrating. Here's an example in the learn section where we would be um, kind of doing this together before he goes off and does his independent work. Um, we'd be looking at a problem together and I would ask, how do you describe the fraction of the pie on each plate? What other ways can you record the fraction piece of the pie? Um, then the next question would be, what do you notice about the numerator and the denominator in two eighths? How does this common factor relate to the fraction one fourth? And then um, we'd move to the next section. And so he's supposed to be kind of answering, answering. A lot of times though, he wouldn't know the answer or he wouldn't be sure how it was asked, like what I was asking. Um, so it was just one of those things where it's like, mom, can I just do the worksheet? <laughs> and he wanted to skip this deeper level thinking and it just kind of created this problem for us. And so I'm really hopeful that Math Mammoth is going to just be a slight more independent, um, yet still advanced and high thinking math program for my son. I have no questions or fears on if this, if this new math will be enough for him, if it will be challenging for him. I am not worried about that at all. It's a very great math program. Um, both of them are great math programs. It's just more of a style change for us and it's an independence factor thing. And it's also just the way that it's taught and the way that the material is presented is so, so different. And so we are switching. I will um, stay tuned for follow-up videos. I will let you know how things are going. And um, if this is the type of stuff that you like, please like this video. Let me know in the comments what kinds of reviews and um, videos you want to see more of. I love doing this stuff for you guys. And be sure to subscribe and hit that bell as well if you want to know when I upload new videos. So thank you for watching. Um, let me know if you have questions in the comments and we will see you next time.